Okay, so uh, the Q6 stuff, I'm going to call solving quadratics by factoring. Solving quadratics by factoring. Okay, so we did a little bit of solving uh, before we did it graphically. Okay, so I'm going to kind of use that as a intro to, to the whole idea of solving by factoring. Okay, so let's say I have this particular equation. Okay, and we are going to try and graph this. Okay, how would I graph this? What would I need to do first? Can I graph it in factor form? No. Not yet, no. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting it into a form that I know how to graph. Okay, so let's start by putting it into standard form. Okay, so to do that, I would have to FOIL. Okay, so what is x times x? x squared. And what's x times negative 1? Negative x. And then what's negative 7 times x? Negative 7x. And what's negative 7 times negative 1? Good, 1. Mm -hmm. Nope, just kidding, 7. Seven. All right, so if I add my like terms, I have x squared minus 8x plus 7. Okay, so if I was going to graph that in standard form, I would have to start by finding my vertex, right? So by definition, how do you find the vertex? Remember, it starts with the h. Negative b over 2a. Okay, so what's my negative b value of that equation, that red one? Negative b. 1, 12, 8. 8, because it would be negative, negative, so we got 8. So 8 over 2 times my A value. 1. So can we all agree that 8 divided by 4 makes 2? I mean, 8 divided by 2 makes 4. That's what I meant to say. 8 divided by 4 makes 2. Okay, 8, I said it wrong again. 8 divided by 2 makes 4. There we go. All right, so then to find the k value, what do I do? Plug it into the original, right? Okay, so 4 squared is 16. And 8 times 4 is 32. And then we have a plus 7. So what is 16 minus 32? Negative 16. What's negative 16 plus 7? Negative 9. Good. All right. So if I was going to graph that, my vertex is at 4, negative 9. Okay. So I draw that point. I'm going to try to do this to the best of my ability. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So right there is 4, negative 9. And then I would need to draw the slope. What's the slope of this? What's the number in front of the x squared? 1. You guys, everybody looking right here? Okay, so the 1. So go up 1, over 1. And then I can go up 3 over 1 from there to get the next point if I wanted. 1, 2, 3 over 1. And then I'd go up 6 over 1. And then I can draw those in the negative directions. So, remember when we were solving by graphing? That one day when we were solving by graphing. So the idea was that uh, this was set equal to 0, and we had 0 equals x squared minus 8x plus 7. And we're solving for the x value. And we graphed it on the, the graph, and we were looking for what particularly? Do you guys remember?
the x-intercepts. Remember, we were looking for where it crossed the x-axis. Do you guys remember that? Okay, so where does this function cross the x-axis? One. One, and where is the other one? Seven. And seven. Okay, so one and seven. One and seven. So x equals one and seven. Okay, so this is what I want you guys to see. If I take the two solutions that I just got, 1 and 7, and go back and take a look at my original piece of information that was given to me in factored form, do you guys notice anything? Any uh, relationship between these two things? Anybody see a relationship? They're what? Reverse. They're like reverses, right? Okay, so what would happen if I plugged 1 into that original equation? So if I plugged 1 into this, what's 1 minus 7? Okay, so we negative 6. And then if I plug 1 into this x, what's 1 minus 1? 0. What's 0 times negative 6? 0. The answer is 0. 0. 0. 0. And then if I plug 7 in, What's 7 minus 1? Or 7 minus 7? 0. 0. And 7 minus 1 is 6. So 0 times 6 is 0. Did you figure it out yet? It's where each of those quantities make 0. Each of the quantities makes 0. Okay, so in my opinion, I don't know if it's your opinion yet because you guys look like you're a little bit lost right now and not to totally focused. So I'm just going to say this is going to be your opinion. Don't you think it's pretty easy to take that factored form, set it equal to zero, and then just come up with those two intercepts to solve the equation? Okay, it's far less work to set those equal to zero than go through the steps of finding the vertex and then graphing it and hope that you land on a nice spot. Okay, so that's what we are going to do today. Did you find him in the hallway? That's nice. Yeah. All right, so question number one. Here we go. Oh, should we pause it? Do we need to uh, get reacquainted? Good. Okay, so let's say I was going to solve question number one. Please excuse the interruption with the following students. Please report to the office for hearing rescreening. Tyler Clement, Gabriel Beers, Brandon Matthews, Lincoln Secor, Sarah Clack, Quincy Clomping, Taylor Dixon, Thomas, Thomas Clark, Abby Hall, Isaiah Todd, Madeline Smith, and Emma Funk. Please report to the office. Thank you. Okay. So, how am I going to solve this algebraically? Ready? Focus. Hello? Hi. How do I solve this? Okay, if my, if my function is written in factored form and it's set equal to zero, how do I find my two solutions? Remember that num that word I kept saying out loud a lot? Yeah, I did, right? What do you think I'm going to do with, with the two quantities, maybe? Set them equal to zero. Okay, so that is how you're going to solve these quadratics. You're just going to take the quantities and set each of them equal to zero and solve them. Okay, so on my left-hand equation, what would you do first? Add 2, good. Okay, so we have 3n is equal to 2. Then what? Divide by 3. Okay, so one solution is 2 thirds. Okay, what about my other equation? Subtract 1. So I have 4n is equal to negative 1. Then what? 
divide by 4. So what's my second solution? Negative 1 fourth. Good. Done. Oh, right? Oh, that's not bad. Okay, let's try the next one, number two. Again, what do I do? What do I do with my two quantities? Good, I set them equal to zero. So one quantity is m. m equals zero. That's a pretty easy equation to solve. The other one's not much harder. What are my two solutions? What are my two solutions? Zero and positive three. Everybody do that in their heads? Get in there. Okay, what about number three? Can you go straight to the answers here? For this one, you would add one, divide by five. One divided by five is one fifth. What would this one give me? Negative one. Negative one, right? You would subtract the one to the other side. What about number four? What's the first answer? Negative two. What's the second answer? Negative five halves, right? You would subtract the five, then divide by two. Negative five halves. Good. Okay, let's practice factoring. Let's make sure we really got this. Remember the factoring stuff. See if uh, Hunter really did learn this. All right, so the first step in solving quadratics is you have to set it equal to zero. 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 Oh, zero. Good. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that my x squared or my whatever variable k squared is always the positive. Okay, I'm not going to subtract it to the other side. I always want that to be the positive value. Okay, so I want 3k squared minus 33k plus 72 equals 0. You good? Okay, so make sure also that all of the, the terms are in order. Okay, some people last period were getting confused because they put the 33 at the end and thought that was the constant value. That changes a lot when you're factoring. Okay, so make sure they're in order. Okay, so at this point, I can factor. Now, I will tell you that it will always be easiest to factor if you can make things smaller. So can I make things smaller? What can I divide everything by? Three. Okay, so if I can make things smaller, I always want to try to do that. That's going to make factoring way easier. Okay, I can divide everything by 3. So, if I divide everything by 3, I'm going to have k squared minus 11k. What's 72 minus uh, 3? 24, good. Okay, so then remember I taught you two methods of factoring. Which method can I use? You can use the box method, but you can also use the easy method, okay? So easy method is simply what two numbers multiply to the last and add to the middle. What two numbers multiply to positive 24 and add to negative 11? 12, There you go, negative 8 and negative 3, good. Okay, so this is going to factor to k minus 8 and k minus 3. Okay, so now once I factor this, I can set each of those quantities equal to 0. So we can go straight to our solutions, I think. What are my two solutions? Positive 8 and positive 3. What do you guys think? We got this? Okay, go grab...